Okay, in this figure, we have a block sliding al along a track from this level here to a higher level up here. And in the, in the meantime, it passes through this intermediate valley. The track is frictionless until it reaches up here. There's a frictional force here that stops the block in a distance d. It's initially going at 6 meters per second, and the difference in height between the first level and the higher level is 1.1 meters. The coefficient of kinetic friction up here is 0.6. Find the distance it stops over. Okay, so right away by conservation of energy, I know that yes, kinetic energy will increase and potential energy will decrease and vice versa on the way back up. But once it gets to here, because it's at the same level and this is frictionless, it's going to have the same potential energy and the same kinetic energy, which means it's going to be going at the same speed. Remember, kinetic energy is not a vector. So this 6 meters per second horizontal will now be 6 meters per second going up the ramp. So I've chosen to use this as my starting point. That way, I can say that this level is h equals 0, and this level up here is going to be the value of h of 1.1. That way, I can say I only have kinetic energy at the beginning. And then when I get up here to this location, I'll have kinetic energy and potential energy. And then when I get over here, I'll have potential energy and thermal energy. Okay, so here we go. At h equals 0, like I said, because that's my h equals 0 level, there is no gravitational potential energy. All of the energy is kinetic. And then when I get to the top level, I will have some potential energy, gravitational potential energy associated with that height. And I'll have a new kinetic energy, which will have a new velocity. I am labeling that vh for the velocity at level h and the kinetic energy at level h. By conservation of energy, the total mechanical energy at my starting point is equal to my total mechanical energy at my final point. I'm going to solve this for kh. And then I can recognize that all of the kinetic energy that is here becomes thermal energy over here. So the number that is associated with the k here is the same number that is associated with the delta thermal over here. So that's what I've done. I, since this is equal to kh, I can also say it's equal to delta thermal. And my delta thermal, I know, is the frictional force times the displacement. Remember, kinetic friction is a constant force, so I can just say force times distance for the work done by friction. Fk is mu k times a normal force, and on a horizontal surface, as is often the case, the normal force is equal to the weight in the absence of other vertical forces. So I, now I can replace delta thermal with mu k mgd. So that's what I've done here. Every term has m in it, so they cancel out. And now I can solve for d, the distance it travels along the top surface is 1.2 meters before it comes to rest.